Welcome back to the Advent Calendar House. A salute to all holiday specials, but mostly the Christmas ones. But today, we're rewinding back to a 1979 celebration of another holiday. The Halloween that almost wasn't. I am Transylvanian mother who apparently needs two days to apply my kid's costume makeup, Mike Westfall. And joining me is a creature tap dancing with someone else's feet. Please welcome back Tom Coombs. Hey, Tom. Hello there, master. Time to clock in. <laughs> uh, you know, I, uh, you gotta watch your sidewalk. I almost slipped on the Uzi patch out there. Oh, dear. Because it's Halloween. <laughs> well, now that's a thing. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say slimy, but I decided to go with Uzi because it sounded closer to icy. Uzi? No, it it works. It works. Now I'm putting it in my notes at the end so I don't forget. <laughs> All right. Awesome. So I tried to get a third guest for this one, but it turns out a lot of people I reached out to thinking they might have watched this totally had never seen it. You remembered it. Tell me your memory of watching this one. Now, I am... Um... When I grew up, my dad worked for a local cable company when I was growing up. So we were kind of spoiled. We had cable <laughs> um, and we had the Disney Channel. And this was in the Disney Channel's original rotation of stuff they would show every Halloween. And I had this on a tape, which was a double feature of this with Witch's Night Out, which we had recorded from the TV because I'm unfortunately not old enough to have seen the original airing of this. But for some reason, every Halloween we would like, you know, it would be on the Disney channel and we'd watch the tape of it. And, um, you know, I have, and let me tell you, I watched it recently and I remembered um, like very little of it, except oh, for wow. the big scene, at the, except for the scene at the end, which mm-hmm. we'll get back to. And, um, I also actually have repressed memories of this, which, uh, I don't know if you want me to share now or share later. Uh, well, if they come up kind of naturally later, let's, yeah, let's do that. Okay. But, uh, this is a very familiar sounding story that I have um, because, yeah, the Disney Channel aired this every Halloween from 1983 to, I think, 1996 is what I read. Mm-hmm. And almost always in a block with Witch's Night Out, which we've covered on this podcast before. My memory of watching this is they'd air it Halloween night around 7, 730. By then, I'd come home from trick or treating. I'm sitting in the living room sorting through my candy with my brother and sister and the Disney channels on and the coming up next promo teases the Halloween that almost wasn't. So, okay, you have my attention now. Let's see what this is about. (laughs) Uh, But to your point, it first aired on October 28th, 1979 on ABC. And then I realized as I'm researching this, the people I asked who hadn't heard of it, maybe it's because when it was released later on VHS, they renamed the special. Mm -hmm. They called it The Night Dracula Saved the World. And first off, no, he didn't. No. He does nothing resembling saving the world. He doesn't even save Halloween. I don't understand why they renamed it to that. No, was, was the world in danger? Like, if Halloween didn't exist anymore, would, like, the world cease to be? I don't know. There's it's just Halloween is over. That's that's not saving the world. I don't understand why they renamed it to that or at all. But the Halloween that almost wasn't is a great premise all on its own. Yeah. For some weird reason, that's more intriguing to me than Dracula saving the world. Who cares about the dumb old world? We almost lost Halloween there for a second. There is no inc- like inclination in this at all whether the world has gone, come to an end if Halloween doesn't happen. It's just going to be like, oh, no more Halloween. Yeah, There's that's it. No world destroying, nothing like that. No monsters coming out. There's no Halloween. Yeah, well, the monsters coming out is a good thing, apparently, on Halloween. That's oh, yeah. what people look forward to. This is set in Transylvania. We meet a family who lives in Transylvania a little bit later, but let's mm-hmm. not jump ahead. I, I no. Let's start with this opening. I want to talk about two things about the opening of this, and we'll start with the castle we see. It's mm-hmm. actually called Lindhurst Mansion, located in Tarrytown, New York. Which oh. Is north of the city and just south of Sleepy Hollow. Ooh. <laughs> Did you have that ready to go? <laughs> no. Oh. I, I wanted to like, watch along with you describing it. 
Oh dear, you're trying to do a live watch of this? This is new. <laughs> Let's see how we do. Okay, all right. Well, quite a few other things were filmed there, most notably 1990s Reversal of Fortune, which won Jeremy Irons an Oscar. Ooh. Here it's both Dracula's Castle and the Witch's Castle later on. Same place. Really? Yeah. I, I just thought like she was like staying there like like it was a hotel or something. No. <laughs> It does look very hotelish. Like it does not look like a creepy castle on the inside when we get to it. And it's like the floors are all kind of white and tiled and very nice looking. Does not look like a vampire or a witch lives in this place. But it does not. It looks like Professor X lives at this place. It does. <laughs> That's why they brought in the fog machine. Yeah. And it is upstate New York where uh, his school was. Yeah, it is well, barely upstate. I think, yeah, Xavier's quite a bit farther upstate than this. But. I think whatever, whenever it's not New York City, it's always upstate New York. Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. It can be south of the city. It's still upstate <laughs> New York. Uh, but the second thing I want to talk about is the opening music. It's the opening of the classical organ piece Toccata and Fugue by Bach. <laughs> So, Tom, you hear this music. Who or what do you think of? Um, Family of the Opera, actually. Oh, you do? Okay. See, growing yeah. up, I associated this music with the character Count Dracula for some mm. reason. And apparently a lot of other people do. Phantom of the Opera is one of the right answers to this. It's in that movie. It's in Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It's not in any Bela Lugosi Dracula movie, but it is in a Bela Lugosi movie. Which one? It's in the black cat that he was in with Boris Karloff, and Boris Karloff plays this on the organ. Hmm. So I don't know whether if we got a really weird Mandela effect that happened there that's developed over close to a century now. But it was never a Dracula theme, but it sort of becomes so now because we all misremember it like that. Yeah, it sounds like, you know... When I hear the music, I think of, like, you know, Castle in the Dark with lightning striking. Yeah. Well, do you yeah. remember the old Castle Dracula in Wildwood? Um, I That was before my time. Okay. that's They would play it as part of their, like, attract music. So that place freaked me out as a kid. But that's probably why I associated it with that. But that doesn't explain, like, the rest of the English-speaking world. But Right, right. But, um... Yeah, it's like it's always like, you know, scary, rainy. It can it can it can fit Dracula, even though it was never used in Dracula. Right. Anyway, we first meet Dracula rising out of his coffin and it's Judd Hirsch from Taxi. <laughs> oh, God bless you, Judge. Did you know as a kid that the guy playing Dracula in this was the guy from Taxi? OK, here comes my big story. For oh, this. My OK. Big now, when I was a kid, I um, I I would say this was like a yearly Halloween thing for me mm -hmm. until I was about six or seven, I want to say. Then, you know, I became maybe too cool for Disney Channel on Halloween and things like that. Um, then years go by, I forgot about it. And then around the time I was 11 or 12, that's about when Taxi started on Nick at Night. Okay, yeah. And as a kid, you know, it's like I like Tony Dance from Who's the Boss? I like Christopher Lloyd because he was Doc. Happy Back to the Future Day. Hey, we fit um, it in. Wow. <laughs> um, I like Jeff Conway from Greece. I like Dan DeVito from everything I've seen. I was saw him in. Um, then there was Judd Hirsch. I like well, also Andy Kaufman, who my mom didn't want me to like. So I grew up in a very <laughs> anti Andy Kaufman household. My mom hated him. I guess if you really don't like Andy Kaufman, like he, he can get grating. So all right. Yeah. Now then there was the character Alex who. As a kid, I liked him, but something set me off about him. Like, I didn't trust the character. And for years, I didn't know why. I was afraid of him for some reason. Then maybe five or six years ago, I'm reading through one of those pop culture articles. This movie comes up, and I realize that Judd Hirsch was in it as Dracula. And it just comes back to me. The memories. That's why I didn't like him as a kid, because he was Dracula <laughs> in this. And even though he's not scary or imposing in this... I was afraid of him on Taxi, and I don't know why. That's amazing. Yeah. I guess if you watched it when you were so little, like, you mm -hmm. can't tell that there are jokes. All you see is scary monsters and Dracula. Yeah. 
Also, another fun fact about this for me. Okay. This was my first big introduction to the Universal Monsters. This movie right here. Oh, really? Yeah. Because I Monster Squad also scared me as a kid. Yeah, that one. I mean, that one can be legitimately frightening more so than this. But so yeah, like Dr- Dracula's like you know like attacking people and like blowing up kids' clubhouses and calling the old girls bitch. Right. It's it's scary. He's a scary Dracula. But anyway, that was my that's my big Judd Hirsch story. That's amazing. I love that. Thank you. But, yeah, I had no idea this was Judd Hirsch until I was an adult rewatching this. I don't have a fun story to go with it. The makeup is just fantastic in this. It won an Emmy for makeup in a children's really? program. So, yeah. So, also at home in Dracula's castle is his hunchback assistant, Igor, played by Henry Gibson. Oh, oh Count Dracula, you almost frightened me to death. Thank you, Igor. Oh, love him. He's best known from Lathin. I know him best from this, but also from two other things. One, he was Tom Hanks's neighbor in The Burbs. Mm-hmm. And he was also the voice of Wilbur in Charlotte's Web. Oh, I actually forgot about that. Yeah, I didn't connect those two dots until rewatching it this time, but I realized, oh, wow. You didn't know him from, he was in the Muppet movie, right? Was he? I don't know. For some reason, I'm thinking he was like an evil doctor in that because he always seemed to be an evil doctor. And wrong. No, Mel Brooks was the evil doctor in a Muppet movie. But uh, I, Dr. Klopek from The Burbs is what I remember him mostly as. No, the only evil doctor I remember in the Muppet movie is Mel Brooks. Hmm. Giving them a cerebrectomy. I'm think, I think of him as the head Nazi in The Blues Brother. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot uh, about that. Don't edit that out. No, I won't. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, but here he's a fantastic Igor watching TV mm-hmm. with his great goblet of popcorn and the news interrupts. And it's Transylvania's local news breaking a story that Dracula has summoned the other leaders of the monster world to his castle and mentioning a rumor that Halloween as a holiday could be in danger of being canceled forever. Some experts believe that Count Dracula himself is behind this threat to end Halloween. How dare they suggest such a thing? Halloween is my national holiday! But meanwhile, somewhere else in Transylvania, we find this family of four getting ready for Halloween, watching the same news report. It's a mom, a dad, two young kids. Mom's doing her daughter's makeup for a costume. But as I'm watching it this time, I realized, wait a minute... This is two days before Halloween. Why is she putting on costume makeup now? Yeah, I'm. Uh, that confused me also. I'm like, oh, they're talking about Halloween getting canceled. Like, they got to do it. It's coming down to the wire. I didn't realize it was like, you know, October 28th or 29th. Yeah. And also, um, I find it something funny that the newscaster said oh. was that Halloween was a 2,000-year-old tradition. I am uh, I did a little research on that. The earliest oh, good. Uh, I can see is uh, from 1556. And um, I don't know, maybe there's like weird Transylvania years or something, but uh, you might want to crunch those numbers again. <laughs> well, I mean, Halloween borrows from so many things, so I'm sure some of those go back 2,000 years. Oh, yeah, but, probably. I don't know. But um, I also find it like pretty funny that this is like, you know, common news that the news that the uh, newscaster, the newscaster is telling this with the same uh, decorum. That the newscaster in Santa Claus Conquers the Martians gives when he announces Santa Claus has been kidnapped by aliens. <laughs> That's very, like, professional newsman, at least in the 70s. That's how they try to deliver every kind of news. To me, it always seemed like this sort of every time a holiday is celebrated and they try to explain the holiday like you've never heard of it before. It's like, Christmas is the day Christians believe Jesus was born. It's like, yeah, we know, man. Yeah. You don't have to give us that introduction every year. It's like if you watch um, like a sequel to a movie and they're going over the like first and se- the events of the previous movie, chances are the person that's watching has seen that movie before. Because why would they be watching like you know Halloween four if they hadn't seen Halloween one and two? Well, it's nice to do a little previously on, but yeah, not quite necessary for a holiday that everybody's already expected for. They can they can do the research. I don't know. Yeah. There's a fine line between explain like I'm five and explain to me for the first time every year. Yes. 
Maybe they're going to a Halloween party. I don't know. They live in Transylvania. It's probably a nightly thing in October in this mm. universe anyway. But Oh, they've got a, a nice looking house also. They do. It's like a brownstone. Yeah. Looks like Baker Street. But uh mm. And the dad does look like Sherlock like he could be Sherlock Holmes. He does, yeah. This scene with the family watching the news gives the special the opportunity to insert some Halloween history. You mentioned the 2,000 years thing. This is where I learned Halloween is short for All Hallows' Eve. It is a sad possibility that Halloween, which got its name from All Hallows' Day, may be receding from us forever. All Hallows' Day? The first day in November used to be called All Hallows' Day. And the night before was called All Hallows' Evening. And then they shortened it to Halloween. As a kid or just now? No, as a kid. Okay. <laughs> Never heard of it before. <laughs> yeah, that's um, that, that's probably the first time I heard it also. Although I probably forgot it by the time I turned uh, seven or eight. They obviously threw it in to make it sort of, look, kids, now you're learning something educational. But I wonder if they threw it in to qualify as a children's program for something, not necessarily the Emmy, but for however children's programming blocks worked back in the day mm, or yeah. pitching it. But this is also where I learned as a kid, jack-o'-lanterns were used to frighten away evil spirits and scary costumes were for protection among ghosts. Very nice. It's, it's a big educational special here. Yeah. And I like when the kid shows throwing a little bit of uh, educational facts here and there. I, I can't think of anything I know from anything else now, but I don't know. I enjoy it. Also, I do like the scene where they're doing this, where, uh, where Dracula's eating the popcorn with Igor. It always gives me a little chuckle there. Oh, yeah. Good evening. And he just flies off. So next we meet the leaders of the monster world, courtesy of Igor, who gives each of them a grand introduction. You're like a ring announcer. <laughs> from Budapest. And I like how some of these guys have alliterative names for no reason. Like, it's Warren the werewolf. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Warren. Yeah, they can't call him Wolf Man. I don't see why not if they already have all these other universal monsters, but it's just quite off. I mean, I don't know. Maybe kids know what a werewolf is more than they know what a wolf man. Anyway. Yeah. What's he going to do? Why does he want us all here? What's he going to do? I don't want to see him. What's he going to do? <laughs> get, get control of yourself. Right? He's played by Jack Riley, who was also Elliot Carlin in the Bob Newhart show. And he's the voice of Stu Pickles from Rugrats. Really? Yes. I did not know that. No, because he does. He just does a great werewolf impression here with the howl and all. Um, the only thing I know Stu's voice from from Rugrats is a country crock butter commercial. <laughs> I, I could hear it in my head. I love dinner parties. You love dinner. Should country crock go here? Oh, that rich buttery country crock taste goes anywhere. <laughs> yeah, same guy. The late, great Jack Riley, his name was. Oh, uh, rip. Next, Igor introduces the Frankenstein creature. The incredible man whom Dr. Frankenstein created in his spare time from a lot of spare parts. The Frankenstein creature. Learned any new dance steps lately? Watch this one. Oh. Played by John Shuck, who would later go on to play another Frankenstein's monsterish character, Herman Munster, in the 80s revival, The Munsters Today. Really? Yeah. And he totally looks like a Fred Gwynn stand-in here. Yes, he does. I actually really like the look of this Frankenstein. It's like the classic flat top, bolts in the neck. I always like that Frankenstein with like the jacket and everything. Yeah, th this was... Again, the makeup won an Emmy, but it's just really great costume work here for such a very quick one-off special that seemed to last forever. Yeah. And is only taping in one location. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, that room where the kids are in the other house is probably another room in this mansion. For, oh, most likely. If I were a kid today, this special would not have kept my attention. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I don't think so. I'm going to put it to the test. Make my kids watch it. <laughs> this Frankenstein creature's uh, thing is he's taken up tap dancing. Oh, you know what I um I do like is that he's credited as Frankenstein's monster. 
Yes, he's credited like that, but they call him the Frankenstein creature in uh, mm-hmm. at least in this introduction. Yeah, but I love his delivery. He's like I like tap dancing. He's perfect. I like the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we have two filler monsters who have no speaking lines, but nonetheless help pad out our team. There's Zabar the Zombie from Tropical Haiti, played by Joseph Elick or Elick who's best known from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. He's the guy holding Jack Nicholson on his shoulders playing basketball. Mm -hmm. He's in this and has no lines. There's the mummy, who also doesn't speak, but falls down a few times, completely wrapped head to toe, portrayed by Robert Fitch, who didn't have too many roles that stand out to me, but IMDb says he's also a magician who has coached David Copperfield and David Blaine. So that's neat. That is pretty neat. And last but not least, Winnie the Witch, who was never addressed by her name again in this, but it's Mariette Hartley, and she's had a very illustrious career, but the one I'm going to highlight is from the old Incredible Hulk TV show. She marries Banner in that. Really? Yes, she's the bride of the Incredible Hulk. Wow. And she was also Sean Astin's mom in Encino Man. <laughs> Oh. And she's currently on that 911 show as um Oh, is she? Yeah, she's uh what's the national girl's name? Oh, uh, I don't remember. But okay. Connie Britton's mom. Oh, wow. She looks great here. Yeah. I love this witch costume. I like how all the monsters here are like, you know, classic monsters. Like, I mean, if there was a ghost as part of this also, it would probably be just like a sheet over someone's head with like oh, two yeah. eyes. I like how they're like all classic looking monsters. So we have all our monsters gathered waiting for Dracula, who tries to fly into the room as a bat. But oops, Igor left the window closed. Great visual of Judd Hirsch's face just smushed up against the glass. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, master. Oh, master. I forgot to open the window. <laughs> Forgive me. It will never happen again. And I know how to make sure it never happens again. <laughs> I, I I did like that. <laughs> I, it got a little chuckle on me. Also, I want to say, if, I, I assumed Dracula was there because um, who was Igor announcing the monsters to? Hey, yeah. Again, he's just doing a ring announcer thing to everyone. Yeah. It's like when you go, I, not that I've ever been to like a really rich person's party, but they have that person who announces everybody as they come in. <laughs> Like they had Dwight doing that one uh, thing in the office. <laughs> Where Jim kept walking in and out. <laughs> yes. Uh, do you think they still do that? Like I don't real, know. Real rich people? I know where rich people live, but the, I, I don't know if they have parties like that. <laughs> uh, that's probably one of those parties where they would do that right before they're like, now who wants to bid on like you know the chance to hunt real humans? <laughs> So then Dracula comes in and starts berating all the monsters because no one's scared of them anymore. He cites Frankenstein monsters tap dancing, the werewolf shaved for a razor blade commercial, and Dracula threatens to replace them. And here's where the witch asks, How soon can I be replaced? I quit. What? You quit? But you can't quit. You know what it means if you quit? I know, boss. I know you know. I want to know she knows. It means no more Halloween. Oh, there's trouble in paradise. Oh, and it turns out she started the rumor Halloween would end because she's tired of being perceived as ugly and unlovable. So unless Dracula agrees to meet a little list of demands, which (laughs) it's a long scroll of parchment that unfurls (laughs) across the floor. She refuses to officially open Halloween. And here we learn some special rule that they made up for this special. So Halloween cannot officially begin until the witch flies on her broomstick over the moon at midnight. If that doesn't happen, it's not Halloween. It's still October 31st. It's just a normal, boring October 31st, I guess. No time travel here, unfortunately. Boo. (laughs) And I think that's the only rule about how Halloween works that they introduced here, besides the little history lesson we got earlier. So she's got all these demands. Do you have a favorite demand on this list, Tom? Uh, no, I have one that makes me like frustrated. Okay. 
of one where she demands that her face be the like the picture on all the Transylvania merchandise. <laughs> the t-shirts. The t-shirts. Ah, it goes by the It's like that would be like if the roles reversed and Dracula went his face or vampires on all the Salem merchandise. Hey, yeah, yeah. It's like witches have Salem. Let like I can't think of tra- like Transylvania not think of Dracula. Like no, uh, that's his hood, man. Yeah, like Salem's her hood. Frankenstein's somewhere in Europe, same with Wolfman and stuff. I mean, it'd be like if, you know, you live in Florida near these areas, it'd be like if E.T. went his face on all the Disney mer- merchandise as, <laughs> as opposed to Mickey. I couldn't think of a good um, <laughs> good universal mascot. Be like if Disney wanted to put Spider-Man in a theme park. Hmm. Yes. But no. <laughs> <laughs> That's different. Yes, it is. My favorite demand is Dracula must stop being terrifying to his fellow monsters and promise to be sweet to them from now on. Oh, that's a nice demand. Yeah. One of her demands is to be co-ruler of the monster world, and Drax having none of that, so... Mm. Which gets up and goes, okay, we have nothing else to talk about. Toodaloo! Uh Uh-oh. And that gives us a chase scene Scooby-Doo style through the hallway. (laughs) Now, I like because we get our chasing with our third act breakup all in one scene. We do. Probably in the same hallway, it looks like. <laughs> it ends with a pile up on what everyone thinks is the witch, but oops, it's Dracula. Let's see who this really is. Don't let her get away. Oh, she got away. <laughs> hey, we're smarter than this. <laughs> Well, Dracula flies on after her as a bat and tries to talk to her. And I, I like he flies up and he starts with, Hiya, baby. Hiya, baby. It's me, Count Dracula. Didn't think it was a hummingbird. <laughs> uh, that classic Judd Hirsch comedy. But she points out it's almost dawn, so she has... No, so he has no choice but to turn back before the sun rises. When we get the joke again where Igor forgot to leave the tomb door open and bonk. And I think this is my favorite Judd Hirsch Dracula tantrum because <clears throat> he talks so quickly. Igor, you did it again. How many times do I have to tell you? Keep my tomb door open at night, closed in the day. Open at night and closed in the day. He's like, how many times do I have to tell you? Leave my tomb door open at night and closed in the day. Open <laughs> at night and closed in the day. <laughs> I can't quite do it, as, as, but his delivery is just flawless. And I feel like, man, we had a missed opportunity here. Judd Hirsch could have been Dracula more regularly. Yeah. Oh, I, the open of the day, I love, he is, I think we take him for granted. Oh, absolutely we do. After these messages, <laughs> we'll be right back. Yeah, I'm silly. Starring Ronald McDonald and the Chicken McNuggets. Ronald, nice to see you in this mess of the woods. Come on. What are you making? We're staring up secret sauces. <laughs> For dipping. We're very good. Let's make sauce. <laughs> oh, well, at least I got my hair done. I have an idea. Whoopie doo McDonald's office. You can always count on them to be terrific. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. But Dracula calls in the night, and we cut to the following night, the night before Halloween. And we're back at this Transylvania family's house, watching the news again. The word is out that it's the witch who's refusing to fly over the moon, and Mom is still touching up her kid's witch makeup. Makes you appreciate elaborate makeup in movies. You always hear about it took three hours every day just to get Jim Carrey made up as the Grinch. (laughs) <laughs> that's why I never chose a Halloween costume that required makeup. I don't have that kind of patience. The closest I think I ever came to makeup was when I was 10. I was Indiana Jones and my mom put on makeup to make it look like I had scruff. Oh, nice. <laughs> but um, yeah, that was pretty much it. I didn't do the makeup or the masks. It's like Lego movie too, when he sharpies uh, stubble on himself. <laughs> exactly. No. Oh, uh. Well, back at Dracula's castle, all the monsters are worried, huddled up and sadly watching TV until the werewolf can't take it anymore with his, what are we going to (laughs) do? And in apparates Dracula out of nowhere, I'll tell you what we're going to do. (laughs) 
they go to the witch's castle and try to sneak up on her, and... As I mentioned, it's the same castle, just with different lighting from a different entrance. And again, the fog machine is there to try and hide it, but you know. Yeah. And with a monster successfully sneak up on and restrain a woman alone in her own home. That's lovely. <laughs> How do you think they uh, got there? Because it's pretty much... It looks like it's just like a short walk from his castle to her castle. Yeah, I don't know where these people live in Transylvania. Is there just like a block of a gated monster neighborhood? That's why I thought it was the same castle, was they were walking outside. Yeah, I, that can be very confusing. Yeah. It looks, seems like there were script problems from day one. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> so Dracula's plan is to hypnotize her. I realize most of this is just me pointing out things that made me laugh. But he tells her to close her eyes and then close them a little more. And she opens them super wide in a disgusted face. <laughs> and Dracula says, that's better. And I think I laughed the hardest at that out of everything in here. I gotta admit, that scene where they're walking around outside, the way that uh, Dracula is stalking is just amazing. Like, he's got the cape in one hand, so if she was were to look out, she wouldn't be able to see him. Meanwhile, the other monsters are just, like, you know, walking around like they're Max and 99 from Get Smart. <laughs> right. But he's doing, and he's, like, doing the thing where he takes a few quick, dramatic steps and looks around. Let me tell you, Judd Hirsch in this special is the same as Harrison Ford in the Star Wars Holiday Special. They are giving it their all. <laughs> they are. Uh, here I should mention a running gag about this, about to start with Igor. The rest of the special is him claiming to know how they can get the witch, only to be very wrong every time. Igor says, except for her broom, she has no magic. But oh, look, she escapes by making a painting of the three musketeers come to life. Oh. Admit it. You underestimated my powers. And you underestimated my ancestors. <laughs> the witch has no magic, eh? She refers to them as her ancestors, though, which is strange, but okay. Sure, why not? Yeah. It's not the weirdest thing in this special. Then Igor insists, they can't harm you, it's an illusion. And then a musketeer cuts off the candlestick Dracula's holding to defend himself. They can't harm oh, Touche. Can't do me any harm, huh? Who did that, termite? Because all the other monsters ran out of the room for cover. Yeah, in, in comedic fashion also. I think if the monsters had stayed, they would have had a, a good shot. Yeah, they outnumber the musketeers. Yeah. Witch runs up into a room at the top of her staircase and makes her protectors poof back into the painting. Are they gone yet? Yes, it's safe for you to come out now and protect my life. <laughs> so here's a bit of a film goof I caught this time. After the musketeers disappear, Igor surprisingly realizes, I've got her broom. But he had it in the first shot of him getting into the witch's castle after they sneak in the front door. The next shot is them ganging up on the witch, and Igor's holding the broom there. I noticed that also. Okay. I was like, okay, he grabbed it on the way in. Maybe he didn't realize he was holding on to it until... Maybe. He grabbed it on the way in, which, fine. I hang my car keys by the door. Why shouldn't the witch leave hers there? <laughs> Except if you're a witch but with a magic broom, why are you using your front door? Fly out a window. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Who am I to tell a witch how she leaves her house? Exactly. This one, it seems, is stuck in hers at the moment now that Igor has the broom. So they go up after her and she's locked in a room at the top of the stairs. And here comes one of... Well, Tom, would you say this is the most memorable scene of this special? Uh, it, it, it's one of, not one the... Of. One, okay, you're right. One of the least two for me. We'll get to the other one at the end. Yeah. But Igor suggested Dracula could sneak into the room by turning into a teeny tiny bat and <laughs> squeezing under the door. What we see that they don't is the witch is listening to them with her ear on the other side of the door. But then Judd Hirsch, who's already gone above and beyond as a comic foil Dracula, takes this big deep breath. And then I don't know if I want to attempt it here or just <laughs> cut it in. <laughs> here goes. And just 
glorious. I can't stress how amazing Judd Hirsch is in this and just brought a whole new side of Dracula that we desperately needed to exist. He did. He, d- he really did. Well, that doesn't work. The witch tries to step on him, but he squeezes back out just in time and we cut hard to angry, full-size Dracula growling at Igor, who now has another idea to break in the room. This one should work. It's pretty much a three-person show at this point. The other monsters have said all their best lines and they're just at the bottom of the stairs now. They're just filler characters now. Yeah, but Igor's next idea is to go out the window, crawl along the ledge of the castle, toss a rope securely around a gargoyle, and swing into the witch's room. All they need is a brave man. And another hard cut to Igor outside on the ledge himself. Here's a better idea. Can't one of you turn into a creature that flies? Hmm. Or, uh... Maybe has uh, has Drek lost that ability since... Uh... No, he's just put his life on the line enough tonight. It's, oh, yeah. It's time for Igor to take one for the team. Mr. All We Need is a brave man. <laughs> time for you to be brave. Watch out for falling gargoyles. <laughs> he sets up the rope, swings into an open window, and again, the witch was listening on the other side of the door, so she just opens it up. As Igor flies in and he falls through the door and sends the whole group of monsters crashing down the stairs. Classic. Except Dracula somehow. He's still by the door, but I never questioned it. He realizes it's almost midnight, so now he's resigned himself to have to give in to the witch's demands. We get an exchange between the two through the door. Is defeated. Hello? <laughs> And responding to the witches, you promise to meet all my demands with a weaker and weaker yes every time. (laughs) I have decided to be generous. All I want to know is, are you meeting my conditions? Yes. My picture is on the posters instead of yours? And then she adds, and you'll take me disco dancing? It's still the 70s. The face he gives when she asks for that. The open mouth gaping, it's, we don't deserve Judd Hirsch. (laughs) I'm saying it right now. We do not deserve him. Well, first he says, and he's not mad about it. He's just like, disco dancing. I don't remember disco dancing. Three minutes to 12. Oh, now I remember. (laughs) So he agrees to everything as long as she hurries up and opens the door. But I like this witch. She's smart. Don't rush me. A girl can change her mind, you know. (gasps) Oh, you wouldn't do that. Guess what I just did. I'm tired of being an ugly old witch. So here's where Dracula tells the other monsters to be quiet. Stop making so much noise. They're just sitting at the bottom of the stairs. But Dracula and we hear footsteps in the middle of the witch's rant. Talking about I'm never going to fly over the moon again. Never. And then we hear. Please, Miss Witch. Don't say that. Please. Dracula, don't you disguise your voice. You can't fool me. Witch thinks it's another trick. Then she looks through the peephole, and no, it's the kids we saw watching the TV earlier come to beg for her not to end Halloween forever. She opens the door after seeing the girl dressed as her. It's her favorite costume, and I'll just let her explain. For heaven's sakes, you look just like me. This is my favorite costume because of you. It is? Why? Because you're one of my favorite people. We love you just the way you are. All of the kids feel that way. You really love me? All right. I'll do it. This is this girl's only credit on IMDb. Her name's Kristen Williams. These kids have got to be in their 40s or early 50s now. Definitely. Her brother, dressed as a scarecrow, is Charlie Fields. He was in the second Kenny Rogers as the Gambler TV movie. Ooh. And Tom, have you ever seen a TV movie called The Electric Grandmother? I have not. It's a Ray Bradbury story that they made into a TV movie. I remember watching it in school, but he's in that too. Uh, It sounds scary. It's not. It's... It's sci-fi. Okay. Yeah. It's like, it reminds me of that Robin Williams movie, Bicentennial Man. 
but it's oh, okay. like they they buy an electric grandmother and she looks all the world like an actual human being grandmother but she's robotic somehow and lives forever so it's like that twilight zone episode it kind of it was a good one Veronica cartwright was in that <laughs> oh was she yes so these kids in this special are transylvania locals do they just know where this witch lives i'm assuming so it seems like in this everyone knows where everyone lives no one's scared of monsters everyone knows that monsters exist and like knows that their businesses and no one has a romanian accent is it like Hollywood where they just give out maps to the homes of the stars? <laughs> Your maps to, to start to monsters homes. <laughs> I don't know why uh, he has a Brooklyn accent. Well, I don't know. The, the Scarecrow kid had a Brooklyn accent, even though he's from Transylvania. So why not? Hey, yo, ma, come on. What's Scarecrow here? Come on. No more jack-o'-lanterns. Jack-o'-lanterns, no candy. Hey, come on. Don't touch the hair. <laughs> I know of maybe two or three famous people who live near me, but I don't know their addresses. But then they don't also live in castles. So that I know of. Also, it's hard to tell how big of an event the witch flying over the moon is, because on one hand, it's known to be the event that rings in Halloween every year. But on the other, the witch is complaining that no one loves her, which, OK, yeah, this little girl just proved that that's not true at all. But on the other hand, is she getting recognition for it? Here's the thing about that. It's like it's like the old guy you know that plays Santa. It's like when he's Santa, yeah, you know, you love him, you talk about him, you know, you invite him to everything. But in the off season, you, you don't talk to him. I guess, I guess I yeah, that's, that was, that's that was a, a bad comparison. It it wasn't a wrong comparison though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it certainly as a trope of Halloween seems to be exclusive to this story. So yeah. I don't know if Dracula met her every demand after this, despite her holding him to it after she promises the kids she'll do it. Starting with the disco dancing right after she rides over the moon. Mm -hmm. We see her take off, and it's a magical little scene as the kids and the monsters cheer into a freeze frame of the kids just watching in amazement. Now here... I would assume they would roll credits, wouldn't, wouldn't you? Right, with that freeze frame, I was ready for it. But no, uh, we uh. get the disco dancing scene. Yeah, This is the scene. If people have seen this, this is what they remember. That, the teeny tiny bat thing from earlier, and maybe Judd Hirsch kind of running into that glass window. I, so I only remembered one thing from this. This was it. <laughs> None of the other monsters want to dance until the witch spins around and transforms into this gorgeous blonde disco queen in a red dress. And then Dracula's all of a sudden, well, and he tosses his cape to reveal a white Saturday night fever jumpsuit. <laughs> and oh snap, Judd Hirsch as Dracula exaggeratedly disco dancing is the greatest way to end anything. It is. It really is. That said, this special came out a year after Witch's Night Out. Both ran back to back on the Disney Channel in that block for about 15 years. Both involve a disco party. Is it weird to you that disco dancing is in several Halloween specials, but I can't think of a strong connection to a Christmas special? I can't either. See, for me, in my mind, Christmas specials are from like, you know, the 50s and 60s. I guess most of the big ones are. Yeah. The Grinch Stole Christmas, Charlie right. Brown, things like that are from the like the 60s. Oh, okay. You all have this, which is like now Halloween is Grinch night. From yeah, like the 70s. that's a good point. All the really big Halloween specials are either from the 70s or 80s. So that's why most of them are disco centric. That's it. That's the answer. We cracked the case. Oh, man. But... It would seem strange when I thought about it, but I didn't think of the time frame. That's why disco died, kids. Didn't latch on to the meaning of Christmas. Uh, <laughs> Dracula killed it. Because <laughs> he's so old, he made it uncool. Any final thoughts on the Halloween that almost wasn't? I think, you know, by itself, nowadays, kids might not enjoy it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed talking to you about it. You know, pair that, like at your Halloween party, you know, pair this with Witches Night Out. You got a solid oh, yeah. one-two punch. It's classic. Like Judd Hirsch really, like he's given it his all. Henry Gibson's given it his all. The witch is giving it her, like, you know, 
she's giving it her all. I honestly thought, like, if I didn't look at the cast list, I would have assumed that was Andrea Martin also. <laughs> but it's it's a good special. I enjoyed it. It's I don't want to say it's simple, but that's what it seems like. It's like, you know, a simple cut and paste story. Something that, you know, you can enjoy in Halloween. You can have the kids. It's not too scary. You know, they have the monsters and things like that. But I like it. I haven't shown this yet to my kids, but definitely I'm going to do it this year. They're now old enough to see stuff like this. And Mm -hmm. I feel like they would really, really enjoy it. So I'm looking forward to that. Tom, thanks for coming back on, man. Of course, man. I, I really enjoy coming on and talking to, like about pop culture stuff to you. Great. It's always a good time. I We talk about stuff like this, like about forgotten stuff like this also. Yeah. Like this is one of those things where it's like it was always buried in the back of my mind until someone brings it up. Then out come the deluge of, you know, Judd Hirsch disco dancing memories. <laughs> well, I'm just glad I found someone who's seen this. Yeah. it's It was definitely a classic in my house as a kid. Mm-hmm. And I really like talking about it. Well, if people want to sneak under your door as a teeny tiny bat, where can they find you on the internet? Um, I'm on Twitter at Classic Tomedy. That is Tomedy with a T and Classic with a C. <laughs> um, and I am on Twitter at Advent Calendar House and at Fall West Mike. Show notes are up at AdventCalendar.house. See y'all in a couple days. Till then, for Tom Coombs from the very thin ledge at at least two stories up on the side of the castle, this is Mike Westfall saying. <laughs> Please watch out for the oozy patch. <laughs> and make sure your tomb door is open before you fly headfirst into it. Good night, everybody. The Advent Calendar House is part of the Christmas Podcast Network, located conveniently at christmaspodcastnetwork.com. You love Christmas, sure. But sometimes the same old traditions are too... traditional. Sometimes you want to see Santa stuff a kid in his sack. Sometimes you want Christmas dinner to come alive and threaten you with knives and forks. Sometimes you just need Christmas to get a bit weird. Weird Christmas has you covered. Check out podcasts filled with annoying Christmas music, proof that Saint Nick came from magic mushrooms, and talk about Christmas specials so disturbing you won't sleep for days. Now available on iTunes and SoundCloud. Weirdchristmas.com. Ho, ho, holy Mary, that's different. Next time on the Advent Calendar House. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane! It's Koopa Claus!